Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Predicting the Future. Today we are going to talk about hidden Markov chain. It's going, to be an in, it's going to be an introduction. The whole topic is pretty big. and it, 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 So this is just a, like a basic introduction of hidden Markov chain. So what is hidden Markov chain? We know a Markov chain is, is a stochastic process that only depends on your current, current uh, random variable. Uh, and hidden Markov chain means that it's a process where you you can't observe the Markov chain itself, but you can observe the signals being being emitted from from each from each transition. Um, one of the example is like what I'm doing right here. I'm talking vocally, and the machine can just predict what the actual words I was talking about. Uh, using my 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 voice, so that's the signal is my voice, and the actual mark of chain is the underlying words I'm talking about. So, uh, so let's begin. So let's let's say X n is a mark of chain with a transition matrix P. It's a conditional probability. So I'm using this uh, notation here, um, and suppose S n is the signal being emitted. At each time the Markov chain enters state at time n, and uh, and it only depends on the state of Markov chain at at time n. So S n is a conditional probability on X n. Uh, that is, so that's that's what I'm talking about here. Talking about here, probability of S n equal to S only depends on uh, the the random variable X n. And let's just uh, write a a new new notation here to be simply for uh, to, to for simple for simple notations uh, below. So we use uh, a function q to to represent this conditional uh, probability. This is not a Markov chain. Uh, just be sure. Uh, just to uh, mention it here. Uh, so in a in a hidden Markov chain experiment, uh, observer. Is only able to observe the signals Sn, x from x1 to let's say to xn. So the Markov chain is unobserved, it's hidden, that's called a hidden Markov chain. And most in many in many cases, people are interested to finding uh, the, the, the probability of the hidden Markov chain that is not observed, um, either in the history or in the future. So for example, one of the one of the uh, interests is that they want uh, people may want to find what's the what's the probability of, uh, of x k equal to j given the whole observed sequence s n, and k is less than equal to n, uh, which is the current state n. Uh, that's one part, one one interest. Uh, other interests are given that we know the the whole signal s n, whole process s n. What's the probability of the next transition? Uh, state of x n plus one uh, equal to j. Let's say. Similarly, uh, people may also uh, interesting. Um, here, so this one is people may also be interested in predicting the next signal uh, given the current signals s n, and, and also uh, the whole um, signal transition probability of the the, the vector s n. Uh, as a random variable, what is the probability of observing a such sequence? So let's, uh, and this is actually, uh, this one is actually uh, the most important one. Uh, why? Because all the things we're gonna see that those those interest of the probabilities will will depend on uh, this this one. So let's uh, let's see how do we find those values. Uh, the the whole idea is is quite simple. It's it's just a basic Bayesian rules conditional probabilities. Uh, not much of those, uh, not much stuff here using the basic uh, definition of what is Markov chain and the conditional Bayes rules. So uh, there's two ways of finding uh, our interest probabilities. This, the first way is called forward approach. So, so what is that? Let's let's first define a function f 
which is function which is probability of the vector Sn, the whole signal equal to Sn, and the last transition Xn equal to J. So that's that's a function we define here. And and uh, if we could if we could find the value of Xn, X, uh, so we could find the value of Fn of J, then the probability of the whole signal Sn equal to Sn is actually just the summation of the Fn over J. And, and the conditional probability of Xn equal to J given Sn equal to, uh, given S, Sn is just a simple Bayes rule. Uh, eventually that will be just the Fnj divided by the sum of Fnj over all j right so that's uh, that's a that's that's one of you see that's one of the reasons xn is very important uh, in in this case which is for approach so how do we find fn so the, the way we find fn is that we the idea is that we first we know the f f1 which is the uh, the probability of x1 equal to i uh, of s1 equal to s uh, s1 equal to s1 which is just the transition uh, probability of given the probability of x1 equal to i times uh, where x1 is equal to i, the, the, the probability of observing as uh, signal s1. So that's simple. And then we're going to start from f1 to find f2 and 3, f3, f4 until fn. And the way we find it, so let's see what's the pattern of fn uh, of a value j. So that is the probability of uh, we, we split the, the signal Sn into Sn minus 1 and specifically uh, like put Sn signal out. Uh, so given Sn, the vector S, Sn minus 1 and Sn equal to Sn uh, and, and Xn equal to J. So that's, we split out the Sn signal explicitly here. And then that will be, um, so that will be um, and then we, we're gonna uh, do a, a, a summation of the x, xn minus 1 term equal to i of all i's. So that's, that's summing all the possible uh, when xn uh, possible values of xn minus 1. And there we'll, we'll just be doing another uh, Bayes rule why we split that. You see here is that once we split that, then we can put uh, conditional probability of uh, xn equal to j, sn equal to sn, given xn minus 1 equal to i, sn vec xn minus 1 vector equal, equal to sn minus 1, times the fn minus 1 uh, of, when, uh, of value i. And that will be because uh, because the whole condition here is only depends on x n minus one, uh, not s n minus uh, not s vector s n minus one. So that becomes this one. Eventually, uh, so I won't go through the details, but uh, uh, eventually what we have is a recursive uh, equation for for finding f n given f n minus one. So that's that's the approach which is called a forward forward approach, uh, and that's how we can find uh, S n probability of S uh, the whole signal vector S n uh, using the forward approach. Another way of finding a uh, probability of S n is is called backward uh, backward approach. So the backward approach is is similar, but we are just looking backwards. Uh, we define a, a new function called um, a BK, uh, BK, which is uh, probability of given XK, the probability of S, SK plus 1 until SN. So that's BK. And then the, uh, the backward approach is, is this way. So we, we know we, we can, the probability of BM minus 1, the biggest one, uh, of uh, value i is easily computable, and then we're using b m minus one to to find b b m minus two, and so on until b one. So b k uh, is is the backward uh, recursive uh, function that that uh, for the backward approach. 
So also I won't be going the details here, but the, but the BK function is also just a simple using the Bayes rules conditional on another um, um, trans, uh, transition k plus one, and and then we will then simplify. We find that this is actually BK is a is an iterative function uh, depends on BK plus one. So if we know BK plus one, then we can find uh, BK. Same once we know BK, we can find BK minus one until we find B one. So that's the backward approach. Uh, so, um, so the probability of S n uh, can also be calculated using both backward and forward uh, iterations. And uh, that's because probability of S n is actually a condition. Now we are conditioned on let's say uh, x k uh, equal to j for any k, then this will be uh, a probability of uh, we split out the first well the first k signals, and uh, and this is a this is another Bayes rule. So uh, we condition on the, the 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 rest of the signals onto the first signals and and, and x k, and then times uh, the joint probability of s the first k signals and x k, and this is the first one. The first one here is. Uh, it's just uh, it's just BK, and the and the second one here is is just FK. So that's a summation of backward function and and, and forward function. So now let's come back to the un unresolved problems we we just uh, mentioned in in the beginning. So how do we find the probability of XK equal to J given all the whole signal SN? Uh, that's Bayes rules, and that's just fk times bk divided by the sum of the whole fk times bk over all state j. And what about uh, finding the probability of xm plus 1 equal to j, predicting the next state given the whole current signals sn? It's also the same, it's just a conditioning uh, Bayes rule. Uh, now we are, we are conditioning on xn equal to i and then. Uh, and then this is, uh, and and those that I already know, we 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 calculate this at the beginning. We calculate this uh, uh, in in the previous ones, um, and same for predicting another state, uh, predicting next possible signals, the S n plus one equal to some some possible signal S n plus one, is also the the Bayes rule. Those are all known uh, from the previous. So this is so. So this one is known from here, and this one is also known. Uh, so, so we could also predict the entire hidden state, which is the the vector x n uh, from from x one to x n, which is uh, which is um, so we are using x on the upper upper corner n as a vector representing the whole process from x1 to xn. So we're interested in finding the states. Uh, so th the interest we, we, we are trying to find, uh, the interest is that we want to see what's the possible, what's the most likely states uh, of the hidden uh, process. So let's, so we're trying to find the, the maximum probability of, of observing this, the hidden state xn Given the observed signal SN, so we try to find the vectors, the whole values uh, y i one to i n that maximize the probability here, right? And uh, so that is actually just uh, Bayes rule as well, just simple Bayes rules, and because SN is given, so it's actually to find the maximum of that of is is the same of this is constant right so this is the only thing we can change is this one and that's that's we just need to maximize the numerator part so we're gonna need to maximize this one um, so how do we do that uh, so given let's let's look at the first k states from x one to x k, 
let's, let's, let we use xk to, uh, to represent the first k states, and we use uh, ik to represent uh, a vector of uh, signal, uh, a vector of state values of i1 to ik. Uh, then we are going to define another function called vk, which is um, which is um, which is the uh, uh, probability of x k x so the first k minus one state is equal to k i k minus one and i x k equal to j given the whole signal s k uh, the first k signals so the value of v k for all k and j can be recursively uh, found. Uh, as follows. So the VK is a maximum. So what we are so let's see what, what we are doing here. So um, so VKJ is as by the definition is a maximum uh, probability uh, of PK uh, of this one, right? And then, but this is the same if we put uh, an, uh, the xk minus 1 out of the xk vector, that will become the same thing. This is the same thing. So that's the vector xk minus 2, and xk minus 1, and xk. Also, we are going to also split out the sk term. So the, that becomes sk minus 1 vector and sk. So this is the, the same thing. As this one, or because of that we also uh, split out the x k minus one term where it goes to i k minus one. So the the whole thing is th this line is just the same as this one. You just split out the k minus term and s k out uh, explicitly, and so that will be. Uh, now we are doing uh, uh, another Bayes conditioning. So that we're we're gonna do conditioning on x k and s k, given the rest of the team the terms, right? And then times the probability of the the rest of the terms. Uh, oh, this is uh, too long. Um, so and then but but that will become what this is. Uh, uh, the the last term is just is just. Uh, uh, vk minus one. The same definition is becomes vk minus one, and and this first term, uh, because xk is only depends on xk minus one, doesn't depend on XK, uh, the rest of the states, also doesn't depend on the rest of the signals. That would just be this one. And so, so that will si further simplify to. Um, we're gonna do a conditioning on this one, uh, so that will become given the current state, uh, given the current, uh, given x k minus one, uh, that will be a transition of uh, from i k minus one to j. So that's this one times the probability of given the current state is j times uh, or uh, observing signal s k. So that is q. Sk given j, and that will become uh, this one. That's that's vk. And v1, v1 is just a simply by the definition of v, v function. That's just a probability of x1 equal to j, uh, s1 equal to s1, and that's just a probability of uh, the the stationary distribution of x1 equal to j times the probability of uh, of j uh, of s1 given given j so our maximization problem comes down to finding this the sequence of uh, a reverse direction uh, by finding uh, the the state so re remember what we are, what we are trying to we are trying to find the values i1 to in that maximize this probability or the same uh, the same same thing is, is the the values of i one to i n that maximize this joint probability. So we want to find those i one to i n. 
right? So that's what we are trying to find with that with those values that maximize that probability. probability. Um, then this will become um, so where we are <laughs> a little bit lost here. Uh, we uh, we are here. Yeah, so we're here. So we finished that v1. Um, so, so that's what we are trying to, to, to maximize. We're trying to maximize this one. Uh, but, uh, but this is just v, vn, right? Vn of, I, uh, of in. Uh, and that's, and, uh, and that's just finding the maximum value of function vn. Uh, and the i n that maximize that is the the i n term. So suppose j n is the value that maximize this this term. So j n is the 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 first the last state we we are looking for. Uh, so j n is the max is 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 the arc max of the function v n i n, uh, but but how do we find the rest of the states that maximize that probability? How about the i n minus one? The same thing. It's just a recursive recurs recursive way. So we we already know j n maximize the whole probability, and j n is just the uh, so the v n j n, right? So that's the that, that's the maximized one. But that's just by the definition we have here. It's just uh, uh, now we're gonna. Um, uh, Put out the xn term ex explicitly as well this time, uh, and and that would be another um, conditional uh, probability that will be uh, given the the jn by uh, of observing the signal sn uh, that will be taken out the same as what just what we just did here. So that's the that's the equations we we just found times the maximum of vn minus one of in. Uh, pro, uh, of uh, just uh, of probability of uh, transition from i n minus one to j j n. So 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 i so i n minus one is the one that we're looking for 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 the net for the for the i n minus one state. So so uh, suppose that's j n minus one. So j n minus one is the one that maximizes this one. Right, so j n uh, uh, is the value uh, uh, of i n minus one that maximize this term. Uh, so now we find j n minus one, and same it's, it's, it's recursive. Way. So it's, it's, we're gonna come back to find j n minus two similarly the same way until we find j one. Now that's how we find the whole. Uh, predicted state uh, of i one to i n, given the uh, the signal of s n vector, and that whole process is called Vitab algorithm. And that's it. Uh, I hope that introduction was not too boring. Uh, I know it's kind of boring. It's mostly a uh, computations, but just want to give the idea of the hidden Markov chain. Uh, what it is, uh, how it how it, how it can be used, and so on. I hope you guys like it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel uh, for further videos. Thank you.